If you're interested in real estate investing, now is the time to start. I want to teach you how to find property for 40 to 90% below market value. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, yes, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Come on, let's worship the Lord. Oh, come on, let's worship the Lord. Oh, come on, let's worship the Lord. Oh, come on, let's worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. He cut an animal horse Oh, my man, and my mama, my satatar. Mama, 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 Oh, Jesus, 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 have your way, God. Jesus, Jesus, have your way, God. Cover us today, Father. Oh, cover us today, God. Cover us today, Jesus. Cover us today, God. Oh, ba na ma ma ba ba. Cover us today. You are mighty God. You are mighty God. You are mighty God. You are mighty God. Hey, oh ba 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 say ya. Oh ra ma ba de ya. Ana na ma do ro po. Come on, let's worship Him. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We glorify your name. Hallelujah. We worship you, Father. Oh, God, we honor you, Jesus. Oh, God, we love you, Jesus. We thank you, Father, for this new day. 
We thank you for this new day. We thank you for this new day. We thank you for this new day. Thank you for this new day, for this life in our body, health and strength. Thank you for life, health and strength. Hey, glory to God. Oh, we were able to wake up on our own without a ventilator. Thank you, Jesus. We were able, Lord God, to get our own selves dressed. We thank you, Father. We were able, Lord God, to drive our own selves to work. We thank you, Father. We were able, Lord God, to talk to our children and understand them, hear them. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord God, for the activity of our limbs, God. Yay, Shekhan Dabasha. We ask you, Lord God, to forgive us for anything, any sin. Oh, God, anything, Lord God, that is not like you, God. Lord God, anything that is not pleasing unto you, oh, Father. We ask that you will cleanse us today, Father. We ask that you will cleanse us from all unrighteousness, oh God. Anything that you find in us, God, that is not like you, God. We give you permission, Lord God, to remove it from our life, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. We ask, Lord God, for your forgiveness today, Father. We ask, Lord God, for your help today, God. We ask that you will cover us today, God. That you will keep us today, Father. In the name of Jesus, we honor you, O oh Father. We honor the Lord today for his goodness and for his mercy. I want to thank God today for being here. Amen. I want to thank God today for our commitment to pray, for our commitment and our sacrifice to pray. As I was praying on Monday, as I was praying on Monday, um, the Lord spoke to me very clear. And he said to cleanse our soul. He said, I want your prayer focus to be on cleansing of the soul. And as I began to look up the word cleanse, the word cleanse, oh God, it means to rid of, it means to rid of something that is unpleasant unwanted or defiling. We think about our own personal homes. When we begin to do our spring cleaning, when we begin to clean out our garages, our closets, when we begin to clean out our vehicles, very seldom do we hold on to unwanted things. I mean, if we're going to clean, we might as well get rid of it, right? And so as we begin to clean our natural houses, we are removing those things that are waste, those things that no longer uh, benefit us, those things that we can no longer fit, that we can no longer wear. Those things, as we clean, we're getting rid of those things that we no longer want, those things that are no longer pleasurable to us, that no longer brings, as we rid ourselves of people, of things, uh, the word cleanse means to rid, to get rid of. And so it is in the spiritual. When the Lord spoke to me on Monday, he said, I want you to lead the church into a time of cleansing, into a time of cleansing. And when I begin to look up spiritually, when the cleansing began to take place, one, one of the first things that I noted was that immediately the flow began to manifest again. I declare and decree to you on today that as you and I begin to rid ourselves of those unpleasant things, those things that are defiling to our, to our bodies, to our temples, I declare and decree to you that you will begin to experience the flow of God in your life again, like never before. Many of you are struggling with understanding the word of God, hearing from God, feeling him when you're in his presence. You're in his presence. You just don't feel him. You feel far away from him. You feel like it takes you longer than it should, normal than normal, to, to get into his presence, to feel his presence. I declare and decree that as you cleanse your soul, as you cleanse your mind, your heart, that of those unwanted things, those unpleasant, defiling things, I declare and decree to you that revelation will begin to manifest and the flow of God will begin 
to manifest in your life again. Luke 19 and 47 backs me up with that. Um, Jesus was had entered into Jerusalem. And as he began to go into the temple, he got upset. The 46 talks about how he began to uh, turn tables over because they had turned the house of prayer to the house of den, thieves. He was upset. That was not the purpose of the house of the Lord. The house of the Lord is not for our own pleasure. It's not for our own gain. We don't come into the presence of God, into the house of the Lord for our own pleasure. So our egos can be stroked. But when we come into his temple, when we come before the father, we're not just coming to him because we have needs. We're coming to him to meet his needs. Somebody declare that with me, that I'm not just coming to the father to meet my needs, but I'm coming to him to meet his needs. Hallelujah. And we know what his needs are. His needs are for souls. His needs is for salvation, for deliverance. And so Luke 19, 47 says, after that, after, hallelujah, he had uh, rid the, the temple of those things that were defiling, those things that were unpleasant, that made him weak, that made him cry because of the disobedience, because of the rebellion, because of what was taking place. Once he finished with the correction, once he finished with rebuking, once he stood up and he began to get the house in order, the Bible says in Luke 19, 47, after that, he began to talk daily. He began to teach daily in the temple. And as a result of the cleansing, revelation and the manifestation began to flow again. So the cleansing of the temple was the actual first great public act of Jesus' ministry. It wasn't a ministry, it wasn't a miracle, but it was his first great act publicly of Jesus' ministry. And the last great public act of his ministry found there in Luke 19, 45 to 48. Um, as I was listening to the father and he said, I want you to present a, a place where the people of God can receive cleansing of their soul through renunciation. Um, the Lord took me to Luke 4 and 18. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. I'm talking to evangelists. I'm talking to preachers. I'm talking to ministers of the gospel. Whether you are deacon and you minister, whoever you are, I'm talking to poor intercessors. The spirit of the Lord is upon us. He has anointed us to preach the gospel to the poor. And poor is just not talking about financially. Poor in the mind, poor state of art. Come on. He has sent us to heal the brokenhearted. This is what our mission is. This is what our call is. This is what our mandate is. To preach deliverance to the captives. We're not here to make friends. We're not here to, to dance around people because we don't want to offend. Jesus offended. The word of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ will offend. But it does not offend so that people can say in their offense. It offends to bring revelation to the air of people, to our lives. Oh God, this is good. Many people who don't want to really accept the fullness of who God is will walk away and say, I was offended, I was hurt. But offense comes. The Bible said it is good that you were offended. Offense comes, offense is, is, is great. It should happen. The Bible is sharper than any two-edged sword. So when, it, when the gospel is preached, it's not supposed to be preached pretty. So the Lord, Spirit of the Lord is upon us, saints of God. He's upon us and he's anointed us to preach the gospel to the poor. Wherever you are, you could be in the marketplace. You could be in the grocery store. Wherever you are, when the Lord comes upon you and he begins to use you, obey the Lord. Obey God. Open your mouth and obey God because someone needs to be healed. There's someone that is standing in your midst, someone in your home, your father, your mother, who's dealing with a broken heart, who needs to be mended, who's bound, who needs to be set free. Come on, this is why they're experiencing unusual circumstances in their body. Let's not just take these opportunities just to listen, but let's use these opportunities to use the ministry of Jesus Christ to set the captives free. He says, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. There are too many people that are around us that are blind. I'm not talking about naturally blind. I'm talking about to the point where they cannot see that they need assistance. 
But at the same time, I am talking about they are naturally blind and spiritually that they need assistance. They need help. They need those of us who have the spirit of the Lord is upon. They need those of us who the Lord has anointed. They need those of us who accepted the call of God in our life. Don't say the call of God is on your life, but you're waiting for a mic. Come on. You may not ever get a mic, but you have a platform called your house. You have children and loved ones who are bound. You have sisters and brothers who are bound and the Lord has anointed us. You have fathers and mothers who are bound that needs to be set free. Walk out of that bedroom and as you're walking, say, Holy Spirit, anoint me for this task. Anoint me. And as you go into that bedroom, as you go into that living room, as you go into that kitchen, ask the Holy Spirit to use you and begin to minister to those who are, who are bound in your home. Hallelujah. There are people who are blind. They are blind to darkness. They don't even know that they are in darkness. They don't even know that they are numb. Someone said something to me the other day. They reached out to me. They said, I am desensitized and I'm numb. I said, well, I've been preaching on those very two things. They said, I just want to find my way back to God. And I began to minister to the, that individual. Saints of God, there are people who don't know that they are blind. They don't know that they are dumb. They don't know that they are ignorant. And the Lord has anointed us. He has anointed us to preach deliverance to those who are bound, to those who are blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. I say this with confidence. The Lord wants to cleanse us. Come on, no matter who you are today that is listening to me under the sound of my voice, the Lord wants to cleanse you. You might be a business person. You may be um, uh, a pastor. Come on, whoever you are, the Lord wants to cleanse us. He said, I need you to lead the people into a time of cleansing of the soul because saints of God, life can be very cruel and hard. Come on, and with these circumstances of life, we get emotional wounds and scars that affect our lives in very negative ways. Many of us, we've tried so hard to move on. We bounce from relationship to relationship. We bounce from career to career. We bounce from city to city. We bounce from state to state. We bounce from state to state. We, we're, we're happy. We're public success, but private failures. Come on, on the outside, we may look good. But on the inside, many of us are hurting from the emotional wounds that we've picked up along life's journey. There are some, some of us, we're dealing with stuff that was not our fault, but we need to be cleansed from it. We need to be cleansed from it so that we can begin to experience the revelation and the flow of God in our lives again. Some of us are trying to preach through, teach through, scream through, run through, shout through trauma and drama that has caused emotional wounds in our lives. Come on, uh, some of you have already acknowledged and dealt with these wounds. You've received healing and now you're living successful lives as a result. Well, I applaud you, but there are many who have not. There are many who have not sought help. There are many who have not cried out to God. There are many who have tried to bury these emotional uh, experiences, traumatic experiences, and have tried to move on as if what they did to you, what they said to you did not affect you. It is affecting you and it is infecting you. It is affecting you, it is infecting you. It is affecting your life. Your lifestyle has changed. Your mood has changed. Come on, you're picking up old habits. You're, you're undercover alcoholic. You are an undercover alcoholic. I sense it by way of the spirit. You're looking back at me. You don't even have to tell me it's you. You don't even, I'm not your God, but I am being used by him. You are an alcoholic drug user. You are an alcoholic. I'm sorry. You are a, uh, you are a, um, you, um, you are a uh, pop pill, a uh, pill popper. You are a pill popper. You're popping pills. You're popping pills to numb yourself, to bring ease to yourself because you're trying to cope with life the best way that you can. So you have resorted back privately, resorted back privately to old habits. But if you're not careful, these old habits will consume you and you will no longer be able to conceal them. You will no longer be able to hide them. 
And then there are those of you who are barely able to function at all because you become so injured as a result. There are many people who can't function. Their hearts have now stopped. Their kidneys have now stopped. I told you that when you do not deal with life properly, it will infect you and affect you, infect you and infect you. Come on. And now your body, your body is being attacked because your heart has been broken. Your mind is not at ease. You're all over the place. Now you are thinking all kinds of thoughts. Come on, someone. Having all kinds of conversations with the devil, entertaining thoughts that you should not entertain about your life. But there is hope. The Lord says to cleanse our soul, to rid. And, and as a result of these health attacks, it begins to cause frustration. As a result of these health attacks, many people don't understand that you're being attacked. You're being attacked in your health because of these matters of the soul that have not been dealt with. But the Lord says that when you cleanse your soul, when we rid these our soul of these unwanted, unpleasant, defiled things, we will begin to breathe again. Come on, we will, mm, we will begin to breathe easier. We will start healing. Come on, where the doctor said, I don't know what it is. The Holy Spirit will begin to show you exactly what it is, how it entered and how to get rid of it. There are many indicators in our society that reveal to us the healing and cleanses that is needed. Come on, how, what are indicators? Suicide is an indicator that someone needs cleansing in their soul. Come on, uh, a society that is addicted to just anything and everything is an indicator that we need, come on, our souls to be cleansed treating people any and every kind of way. I mean, I have never seen it at an all time high, like we are experiencing it now, where people are no longer hiding. It used to be a time when you couldn't tell who your hater was. Come on. But now people are, they're pulling the white cloths off their head and they're saying, I don't like you. They're saying to your face, I am assigned to destroy your life. Come on, these are indicators of situations in our society that needs healing, cleansing of the soul. Um, drug problems, gang problems are indicators that we need cleansing of our soul. Police murders, not police help, but police murdering. People that they are called to help. Hey, 911, I have an emergency. My, pop, my son is dealing with mental health and they're arriving, murdering these people instead of helping them. Are all indicators that we need our souls to be cleansed. People who are falling away from God, turning their backs against God. Come on, no honor and no respect in the house of God. Dare you to correct them. Dare you to question them. Are all indicators that we need, y'all are very quiet today, that we need our souls cleansed, ego, pride, arrogance, come on, adultery, fornication, come on, hurting people because we're hurt are all indicators that we need our souls cleansed and so much more. If our society's illnesses are going to be broken, if our homes are going to be fixed, then we got to break the chains that are in our lives and stop this endless cycle of hurting and wounding people. We must stop this endless cycle of being in denial that we need God, that that word was for somebody else, but never receiving the word of God for ourselves. It was for my wife. It was from my husband. No, if you heard it the day you hear his voice, hard and not your heart is what the word of God says. Come on, someone. 
The major causes of most wounds that many of us have gone through, emotional wounds that have been inflicted by parents. Come on, you hear so many people say, I didn't have a father. I don't know who my father is. Fatherless wounds. Those are wounds that stay embedded. Come on, someone. And they, they are expressed through fatherhood. So because you didn't have a father, you're going to be an absent father. So because you didn't have someone to teach you how to be a mother, you didn't have a mother to show you how to be a mother, you're going to be a bad mother. No, these are emotional wounds that need to be dealt with cleansing in our soul so that we can rob ourselves of excuses. Physical, mental, verbal abuse are also major causes of wounds. And this is why we need cleansing. You may not have been a phys you may not have been physically abused, mentally abused, verbally abused. There are some people who are doing the abusing. All of those things, whether one or the other, results in cleansing of our soul. Sexual abuse. Come on. Come on. Being touched in ways that you did not desire, that made you feel uncomfortable by whoever, son, brother, cousin, mama, teacher, coach. Come on. Sexual abuse. Saying no, but was manipulated into believing and thinking it was okay. These are also ways that wounds enter into our life, abandonment issues. That's why some people can't stay still long. They don't know how to keep a job long. They don't know how to stay at a church long. They got abandonment issues. Come on, people have always abandoned them. So now they have picked up those say, oh God. Abandoned, those are wounds, abandonment. Always looking, never receiving genuine love because you're always looking to see Who's going to hurt me next? And that cuts relationships. It destroys relationships. When a person's got to constantly fight with what you have experienced because someone abandoned you, mama abandoned you, left you with grandma, left you with uncle, auntie. Come on. Broken relationships, major disappointments, thinking your life was going to go to the, to the right and it went way to the left and you wasn't prepared for it. Come on, not getting what you thought you deserved and giving up as if that one no was the final for your destiny. Come on, divorces. These are ways that wounds are opened up. Come on. And then we think just because it was us that our children don't have to deal with it. Now they're dealing with it. And because we were too desensitized, we were too numb. We were too broken. We didn't get the total family delivered. We didn't get the total family therapy. And now those kids and their kids are gonna have to deal with the cycles that you and I and our parents and their parents and their parents did not break. Do you see how this is never ending? Major moral failure, public failure. Come on. And then it results in wounds. Wounds such as angerness and bitterness, rage, repeating the same things that was done to you, low self-esteem, no confidence. The Lord said, I want you to take the church on a cleansing of the soul. This applies to everyone. There's not a person that is listening under the sound of my voice or will listen that does not need our souls cleansed. Life happens to everyone. An unexpected health challenge, it leaves traumatic experience. It causes our emotions to go all kinds of places. Fear tried to grip us. What if they don't make it? What if they die? What if they, what if they? I never forget when Apostle first got sick and he first came home. I wouldn't sleep because I was afraid. I was scared to even bring him home. What if I don't take care of him right? There's so many things that go into being a caregiver. So that's why I don't let no one, I don't care what people say. If you're a caregiver, no one can ever understand the life you're in 
like you have to understand it. It's not easy. It's emotional. And I constantly have to go before God and cry out to God to deliver me. There's like 90% of us on here that are caregivers. Sister Williams is a caregiver right now. Sister Tierra, parents are operating as caregivers. Come on, Deacon Clayton's wife and their family is in the field of caring for others. Come on. So as we, Sister Minister Saria, back and forth, caring for others. These are, these emotional experiences of people relying on you also can cause affliction. Come on, can cause affliction, abandonment, feeling lonely because now you're being withdrawn from your normalcy of life. The Lord said we need to cleanse our soul, being upset because why my house? Why did it happen to my house? Why do we have to experience this attack? We need to cleanse our soul in the mighty name of Jesus. Most times, the, Jesus, most times the person we have become has been shaped by these wounds. And this is the result. Most times the person that we don't like to look back at in the mirror, the person that we have become, the person we are today is because of these wounds. And what we see is the result of it. But when we put what we have gone through, what we have experienced, when we put it in the hands of God, I declare and decree that you will start seeing the flow of God, the breath of God will breathe upon us. And we will, we will, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. We will start finding ourselves where the strongholds will be broken off of our life. Python spirits, I come against it right now in the name of Jesus. Come on. This is why many people are unhappy with the way their lives are turning out. I've never seen so many miserable people. Miserable. Because wounds have occurred in their life, situations that have shaped and formed their life. And now they're left with the fragments of the pieces of their heart, hallelujah. And because we fail to deal with important issues, as a result, now we're dealing with impairment from having a life filled, come on, we're having impairment and we cannot experience the richness and the abundance of God. And that is what God wants us to experience. He wants us for the rest of our life to experience the richness, the richness and the abundance of God. But we must get broken free from these bondages. Hallelujah. Now, there is more that I have. I'm going to be coming back tonight after I release our word from our apostle. And I'm going to be dealing with more of this as of tonight, today, until the rest, until the Lord, until we release from it. But right now in the local I need you to just open your mouth wherever you are and just start praying right now. Just start praying. And I'm going to lead you in about five minutes of renunciation. Come on, right now. Come on. We are going to beginning today. We're going to for the next five minutes and then we're going to complete pick up tonight and we're going to keep going until the Lord says that our souls are cleansed and not just the soul of us as individual, but the souls corporately as a ministry. Because remember, go back, go back up to Rev when I begin to tell you about Luke 19 and 47. It says that after Jesus had, after Jesus had cleansed the temple, after Jesus had turned the tables over, after Jesus had finished with, you know, dealing with what he needed to deal with, it says, then the Lord, he began to teach the word of God daily. In other words, it was okay. The flow, the atmosphere was conducive for the spirit of God and, and the manifestation of the Lord began to happen. The flow of God began to happen. And I declare and decree to you that as you cleanse your soul, that you're going to experience the flow of God again in your life like never before. So come on, open up your mouth and begin to worship him. Come on, open up your mouth and begin to worship him. Come on, and then I want you to repeat after me as much as you can. 
We're going to renounce every hidden thing, every hidden thing, and everything known and unknown to us. Come on, we're gonna we're going to renounce every hidden thing and every un every Lord God, everything known to us. So those things that we know about and those things that we don't, Holy Spirit is gonna reveal them to us. Amen. Hallelujah. Repeat after me. God save me. Come on, repeat after me. Please help me, oh God. Repeat after me, change me from the inside out. Come on, ask him, tell him, you know my ways. You know what is not like you. Repeat after me as much as you can. Help me to identify who I am. That's what we want. We want him to help us. Come on, say this with me. The ways of me that are not like you so that I may be sanctified and cleansed from all unrighteousness. Come on, repeat. Teach me, oh God, oh Baba Dada. Do something in me that has never been done before. Come on, repeat after me. Heal me in ways, hey, glory to God, that I've never been touched before. As I look at myself in the mirror, help me to see all of me. Mm, yes, God. Oh, God, today. Come on, we're about to go there. I renounce every tie to the demons that know my name. I renounce every tie to demons that knows my natural address. In the name of Jesus, repeat after me. I renounce all lust. I renounce all perversion. I renounce all, um, what is the word? I'm hearing the Holy Spirit say, I renounce all, he'll give it to me. I renounce all immorality. I renounce all uncleanness. I renounce impurity. I renounce pornography. I renounce, we're not saying yes, but we're saying I renounce it. We're not saying amen, but we're repeating exactly what I am saying. I renounce all pornography. I renounce all impurity. I renounce all sexual sin in the name of Jesus. I renounce all ungodly soul ties and immoral relationships in the name of Jesus. Repeat after me. I forgive any person who has ever hurt me, whether they have acknowledged it or not. I forgive myself from disappointing me. I forgive myself for letting me down. I forgive myself for abandoning me, for making others a priority over me, over my health, over my well being. I forgive myself for not thinking enough of myself, believing enough in me, that I abandoned my dreams. I abandoned my goals. I abandoned my desires for the applaud of others, of the applaud of others. Say it. I forgive myself for mistreating me for not slowing down to take care of me properly, for not taking myself to the doctor like I should. And now my condition is worse because I abandoned me and I mistreated me. I forgive myself and I rid myself. I cleanse myself of further abandoning me of further mistreating me, of not thinking highly of myself, come on, of not thinking that I deserve greatness. I 
I forgive myself for discrediting me. I forgive myself. Uh oh, I heard that. For discounting me in the name of Jesus, for mistreating me in the name of Jesus. I forgive myself for rejecting me in the name of Jesus. I forgive myself for not giving myself a chance of God's richness. I forgive myself for holding myself back from trying to follow others, for trying to please others. I forgive myself because I'm years now down the road and I'm not happy with myself. Father, forgive me. Cleanse me, Father, of this self-righteousness. Forgive me of false humility. Forgive me of false humility. Of saying I'm good when I'm not. Rid me of that, Father. Cleanse my soul, Father. Of further mistreating myself, further abandoning myself, further disappointing myself, further discounting myself, and further hurting myself. Hurting myself by putting myself in atmospheres I know do not believe in me, trying to fit in. I cleanse my soul today. And I renounce pride. I renounce haughtiness. I renounce arrogance. I renounce vanity. Yes, you're egotistical. Let's renounce that too. I renounce the spirit of ego. Knowing you need help but won't listen to nobody suffering falsely because you will not listen to nobody. Won't let nobody help you. Won't let nobody help you. Always saying, I got it. When you need help, we renounce the spirit of disobedience. We renounce the spirit of rebellion always going and doing contrary, opposite of what others are doing, always making an excuse, always acting as if, that our excuses are enough to disobey God with our temples. Let's cleanse our soul. Let's cleanse our soul from these returned habits. If not, you'll keep returning back to these same habits, to these same addictions. You'll die never ever having come to full, to full wholeness. Who's hearing me this morning? So let's rid ourselves. Let's renounce pride, haughtiness. The enemy knows that the more he can keep you silent about it, the more he can keep you quiet about it, the more he will keep you bound to it. And many people are bound because we have false humility, false righteous. We're not righteous. Righteous, right standing with God, we're not, and God knows it. Even if you're fooling people, you we will never fool God. So we gotta cleanse ourselves. Light and darkness, he says, cannot dwell in the same temple. Either we're going to live for God or we're not. We're making it difficult. It's not that difficult. Some of us keep falling because we're trying to stay connected to the same kind of people. That reminds us of what we just got delivered from. You can't do it. Some of us keep falling because we, because we have ego, pride, arrogant, vanity. We're haughty. We think we're somewhere in, the, in God. 
that we're not. We think we're stronger than we are. And then when temptation come, God does not tempt us, Satan does. You think God will bring temptation knowing God already knew that if, if he was the author of this temptation, he already knew we would fail. He's not going to tempt us to fail. His system is proving for us to win. He's not interested in us failing. It is Satan that tempts us because he knows we're ego. We have egos. He knows we're prideful. He knows we're arrogant. He knows we're puffed up. He knows we're haughty. It is Satan that tempts us and we're falling. Because we will not renounce the spirits of pride. And when we hear them being taught, when we hear them being preached, we think they're for others and they're not. Can we please start taking every gospel, every word, whether Sunday, Wednesday, and say, God, I am showing up so that you can speak to me about me so that me can change and that me can be more like you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. But we must cleanse our soul, which means to rid ourselves of unpleasant, unwanted things that defile our temple, things that grieve the Holy Spirit. So we renounce Holy Spirit today. Say this with me. We renounce envy. We renounce jealousy. And we renounce covetedness and we're closing on those. Envy. We're not going to go after something that don't belong to us. We're not going to put our eyes and desire somebody else's husband, somebody else's wife, somebody else's car, somebody else's house, somebody else's stuff. That's coveting. To want something that's not yours. Envious. Can't celebrate the accomplishments. The hard work ethics of someone else. That caused them to put them in the position to be able to get the things they have. Buy the things they have. To do the things they need to do. We renounce. We renounce envy, jealousy, false jealousy. I'm so happy for you. No, you're not. Stop lying. Don't even say it. Ask the Holy Spirit to cleanse you. God, why am I not that happy for sister so-and-so? Why am I not that happy for my sister? Why am I not happy for my pastor? Why am I not happy for my brother? What is it? Your soul. Needs to be cleansed. And you need to forgive yourself. Because somewhere in your mind, in your heart, you feel like that should have been you. And it probably should have and it could have. But we got to forgive ourselves for falling so far behind, making excuses after excuses after excuses. I don't care if you have a record. I don't care if you have no high school diploma. I don't care. Come on, there's so many successful millionaires and billionaires who never even finished grade school. No excuse. There are so many people who were homeless. Steve Harvey, Tyler Perry. Michael Jordan was denied over and over and over and over and over. But look, there's no excuse. We got to rid ourselves and renounce what is in our heart that causes us to go after desire. Our eyes to want what someone else has and then cannot applaud and cannot be happy. Genuinely. Without question or concern, minding our business of, of that individual. We have to rid ourselves, cleanse our soul. 
so that we can be able to see the flow of God in our lives again. Say to God, I hope you hear this. I'm just obeying God. I am obeying God. I will never stop. If I hear God's voice, I will never stop obeying God. And he says, we need to cleanse our soul. We need to renounce, renounce. We need to renounce Satan, renounce these things, call them out. We need to call them out of our life, call them out of our minds, call them out of our hearts. Be our flesh on the altar. So we will not have public exposure so that we can be able to, to hear revelation from God as we open up his word. So we can stop backsliding in the church, walking away from the church. Saints of God, this is serious. So we can, so we can, our bodies can be healed. And so that we can be able to enjoy the rest of our days, seconds, minutes, hours, months on this earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We must rid ourselves, cleanse our soul, oh God. Somebody open your mouth and say that, cleanse my soul. My, our soul is our mind, our will, our intellect. Our soul is where our emotions live. This is why people act certain ways, do certain things, say stuff, and it don't bring conviction because their souls need to be cleansed. It used to be a time when we sinned, we will instantly feel convicted, but now we don't. There's no conviction. We just keep sinning. We just go to sleep sinning and there's no repentance. We just hurt people, we do things. Come on, we lie, we scheme, we plot, and there is no conviction because our souls need to be cleansed. Holy Spirit, help us today. We got to look at ourselves in the mirror and say, God, I don't like what I see. I don't like what I see. Identify God. What Help me, Lord God, reveal to me what I don't see, what I don't know. Help me to identify who I am, not just positive, but the negative. So I can, so I can beat that my flesh at the altar and rid myself of that person, rid myself of that individual, rid myself of who I become that I do not like. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father, for this day. You love us so much, God, that you just continue, Lord, to speak to us in such a bold, a bold state. Thank you, God, that you're raising up bold leaders, that you are raising up bold leaders that are on the front line, that are waging war on behalf of ministries, of families, of our own selves, that are being attacked because our boldness, that are being attacked because of our confidence and because of our stand. Thank you, Father, that you are raising up bold elders, bold deacons, bold evangelists, bold intercessors, bold apostles, bold bishops, bold ministers, bold teachers, bold partners, bold, that you're just raising up bold individuals that will cry loud, spare not, and will lift up our voices like a trumpet that will show thy people their transgressions. 
Thank you, Father, that we're just not waiting until we get to a funeral to speak on these things. But Lord God, we're using every opportunity, Lord God, to talk about Jesus Christ, to spread the love of Jesus throughout the earth. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, that you are raising us up, that you are filling us up, that you're raising us up. That Lord God, that we are not, we're not holding back. We're not holding back, but we're standing up, Lord God, and we're declaring your word with the sword of the spirit in our hand, Lord God, and we believe you, God, we believe your word that we shall see a flow of God in our life again, that we shall experience a revelation of God, the goodness of God, the richness of God abounding in our life again. Thank you, Lord God, that new doors are open, expansion is happening for our lives, for our businesses. Hey, global shot, glory to God, that expansion is happening now, that doors are opening now, that people, Lord God, are discussing our names, discussing my name, Lord God, in conference tables, Lord God, in platforms, Lord God, that I don't qualify for, Lord God, in arenas, in areas, Lord God, with doctors and Lord God with apostles and with bishops and prophets and prophetess Lord God to be able to use Lord God the anointing that is upon my life Lord God I thank you for covering us with your blood I thank you Lord God for covering us with your precious blood God I thank you Lord God for raising us up in a time God where it seems that this is not popular where preaching the gospel is not popular where living right is not popular with living holiness is not popular, where righteousness is not popular. God, we thank you that there are a people, God, that are warding off demons, that are fighting off Satan, that are fighting through temptations, that are, Lord God, standing, Lord God, in an hour, God, where everything is coming up against us that could, that would try. But God, we are determined, Lord God, like soldiers, that we will not flinch, that we will be like a tree that is planted, Lord God, by the word of God that we will not be moved, God. Oh, I thank you, Jesus, that we will not be moved. I will not be moved, God, until the last breath is taken out of my body, Jesus. I will not be moved, God, until you are satisfied with my work, God. I am not, will not be moved. We will not be moved, God. Hey, glory to God, until the scales are removed from off of our eyes, until our sons are are delivered, our daughters are delivered, our sisters and our brothers, our mothers, our fathers, until our families are delivered, our families are restored, our marriages are restored. God, we will not, we will not bow down at any other God, at any idol God. We will not bow down to any false narratives of who you are, God. We will not bow down, God, to this culture, God, to this twisted, perverted, demonic culture, God. We will not bow down, but God, we are serious about the assignment that is at hand, God. We will not be a switch out. We just won't go to other ministries because it's popular, because they're bigger. Hallelujah. To avoid the assignment that you have for us here, God, because it may be smaller, but yet it's powerful at stake, at heart. God, we thank you, God, that we won't be sellouts and switch outs. Lord God, but Lord, we will use every tool. We will use every technique. We will use every device that you have given unto us, God. Lord God, to get the word out with clarity, with demonstration, with preciseness. We will not hold back on you. We will not hold back on your goodness. We will not hold back on testimonies. We will not hold back from our gifts. We will not hold back with our resources, but God, we will be obedient in every area of our lives. Lord God, because we realize that this thing is bigger than us. 
Somebody declared that this is bigger than me. My obedience to God, our obedience to God is bigger than us. Our yes to God, saints, is bigger than us. Our denouncing and renouncing these evil and these sexual demons and uh, these habits and these addictions is bigger than us. It's bigger than us. Come on. When you get delivered, your daughters can get delivered. Your grandchildren can get delivered. It is bigger than us. Hallelujah. It's bigger than us. And God, God, we thank you for giving us the stamina. We thank you for building our momentum in prayer. We thank you for building our momentum in worship. We thank you for building our momentum in praise. Lord God, we've decided within our hearts a long time ago that if you want to use us, here we are. Oh God, we thank you. Here we are, Father. You can use us, God. Use us as you please, God. And we'll forever give you the glory. We'll forever give you the honor. And we'll forever give you all the praise. I need all the saints to just declare amen, amen, and amen. Well, saints of God, I thank you for being here on this afternoon for this, um, this impartation. In the name of Jesus, we don't want you to miss tonight. We want you to arrive early. Our apostle is going to be ministering from 7 to 7 of 40, and then yours truly is going to come back, and we're going to begin to dig even deeper into what the Lord wants us to do as we cleanse, Lord God. And I don't definitely don't want you all to miss uh, uh, February 26, um, because I'm going to be, it's going to be a two-hour intense of training. I'm going to also incorporate one of my brothers in the Lord. It's going to be a two hour intensive training on how you as elders, deacons, ministers, intercessors, whoever you are, ushers, how we can navigate through technology, because whether we like it or not, technology is here to stay, and how we can be soul winners through technology, uh, during our live experiences, how you can interact. We're going to be talking about the proper way to interact, you know, uh, receive when the word of God is going for us, how to engage with prayer, you know, as we're praying. I know a lot of times when we come on our, our lives, our, our, our videos are off. Well, beginning next month, I'm going to be encouraging us for the rest of this month. We need to we need to have our videos on. I love when I watch Bishop Hilliard's church, and I love when I watch uh, other churches and their lives, and they're on Zoom. They you see the faces of the people, so that the pastor, the leader, can see who's praying, see who's even. I've seen people who are at work sitting at desks like mine, and they're working and typing, but they're still lifting their hands. They're still engaging. So we're going to talk about all of those things because it is very very important that we not hide. The enemy wants us to hide. He wants us to hide behind sin. He wants us to hide behind obedience. He wants us to hide behind technology, but the devil is a liar. We're not hiding. I don't care if you got PJs on. We're not, we're not hiding. I don't care if you are at work. We're not hiding. In this hour, we want our faces to be shown so that we can see together corporately, so we can get victory together, so we can gain access into the throne room of God together. So it's, I'm excited. I, I can't tell you how excited I am right now. You know, when, when the enemy comes in, the Bible says like a flood, he lifts up a standard. And I'm telling you, saints of God, as you and I cleanse our soul, don't stop now, just keep going. Once we hang up, keep talking to God, keep crying out to God. I renounce and just declare it. I renounce lying. We got, there are a lot of saints, older and younger are just some lying spirits, lying demons, never can tell the truth about nothing. You got to renounce that. You got to renounce the spirit of foolishness, renounce the spirit of complaining. That's a spirit. Complaining is a spirit. Lying, we know what the Bible says about liars, how they place in a lake of fire. So we need to renounce lying. We need to renounce, uh, renounce uh, complaining. We need to renounce lateness, stubbornness. I mean, just go deep, go deep. I renounce it off my life. Get out of my life. Get away from my life. Go back into dry places. Get out of my thoughts. I renounce you, spirit of lying. I renounce you, sabotaging spirit. Always 
sabotaging stuff. Come on. Oh, we're going to go deep. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we're going to stop and pause to make sure that we're doing it. Come on. We got to renounce these things. These things that I've spoke of and more. We're cleansing our soul. Remember Luke 19, 44. Start reading at the 44th verse through the 48th verse. It talks about when Jesus was coming into Jerusalem and he came upon them at the temple and he literally had a fit. What are you doing? Why are y'all doing this? And the Lord wants us to cleanse our soul so that our temple, cleanse our temple, our soul, so that we can be able to receive from the Lord, that we can hear from God. Hallelujah. So people can start taking us serious. Come on, that demons will tremble when they come into our resistance. The reason why demons ain't being delivered in churches is because people aren't really operating in the true spirit of God. So demons ain't afraid. Demons ain't afraid of nobody. Oh, God, cleanse our soul so people can be delivered healed and set free. And the Bible says in the 47th verse, again, and I'm closing, that the moment when Jesus felt like the house was right, <laughs> he began to teach. And the Bible says, and now the revelation, he was only able to teach because it was a flow. Hallelujah. He couldn't teach because there wasn't no flow. It wasn't no flow because it was too dirty. It was too messy. So we want to ask the Holy Spirit to release all the dirt out of our life. Come on, that have been attached to emotional wounds. Hallelujah, the scars. Come on, from years, current years, past years, uh, different episodes, events in the name of Jesus. And we don't want to walk around and act like we're not okay. We got to forgive ourselves for mistreating ourselves. I don't know if you heard that, but that was good. Forgive ourselves for mistreating ourselves, for putting other people above us, for not taking proper care of ourselves. There are people right now whose situations in their life, my mother, I will never forget it. The doctors told her years ago, it's about three or four years ago, that she had that her heart had looked like it was having some challenges and that she needed to go to the heart doctor. The heart doctor uh, her physical primary doctor referred her to a heart doctor. She never went. She never went. But I guarantee you, she went to the conferences. I guarantee you, she went to all of the district missionary events. She showed up everywhere that she was supposed to be, but to the place she should have been. And then like two years later, she ends up having heart failure. And now sitting up here with all of these devices inside of her body because she mistreated herself, because she put herself last, because she did not take care of herself properly like she should have. And as a result of it, when, when, when her heart failed, the primary doctor said, if you go back to your notes, Miss Miles, I told you two, three years ago that you were dealing with some heart failure, but you did not deal with it. And many of us right now, we're dealing with the aftermath of experiences, issues that have happened to us that we just looked over, that we just pushed under the rug and covered up and said, oh, it didn't really matter. It didn't really hurt. They, I know, No, it did. I don't care what you say. Life hurts. If something happens to you, it hurts. If disappointment happens to you, it hurts. When you are let down, when you are abandoned, when you are rejected, it hurts. And if it's not properly dealt with, it will, it will allow our lives to stop flowing. It will start making people not want to be around us because they sense something about us that does that that literally clogs up the the freedom and the love and the joy you ever have somebody and you was like wow they like whoa they came in and it, the whole atmosphere shifted yeah some of us are shifting atmospheres and not in a not in a positive way so thank you so much for your time for your patience come on these things how be it these things come through fasting and prayer and i as your pastor i am committed as long as you allow me to, I am committed to praying, to walking with you, to helping you, hallelujah, so that we can get the, that we can experience the richness of God in our lives for the remainder of the seconds, minutes, days, hours, months, and years that we have remaining upon this earth. God bless you. We'll see you tonight at seven. I want to remind you this Sunday, 
at seven. Apostle is going to be sharing. He wants to talk about this himself tonight, but we're looking for everyone to come out and honor our apostle. I did not want a service. He wanted a service. We got 1100 square, 1100 seater church for the purpose of no one having an excuse about the COVID. We can spread out and be everywhere. Don't let guests be there and our church family not be there. Um, we were asking everyone for a $46 seed or more, how whatever the Lord lays on your heart, um, which honors the amount of days our apostle has been living. He's celebrating his 46th birth birthday. And we've been also asking every department, the men department, the women department to represent, uh, the ushers, every department to represent um, with a presentation, I gave you examples, gift cards to Amazon, gift um, cards to, um, to Amazon, that's where I get some of his shirts from, gift cards to uh, Walgreens, that's where I get all of his supplies from the briefs and all of those things. Um, uh, we know that Apostle loves Carabas. Um, I take him to the mall to get his, tail, <laughs> his toes and nails done um, right at the nail shop right next door to JC JCPenney. Um, if you're guessing which one, that's the only one that uh, will do a pedicure without him being having to get out of the chair. Um, so things like that. Um, uh, but as far as his seed, uh, we're asking everyone to sow a $46 seed. And as far as the departments, we're asking um, you uh, to make a presentation with card or whatever you want to present. Um, and if you were looking for gift ideas as of departments, you can do those in the form of Amazon cars, Walgreens cars, et cetera. We'll be reminding you again on this afternoon. And then lastly, please help us spread the word. Thank you. I saw the Deacon Clayton share the flyer on um, today. Please get the flyer. If you don't have a profile picture, make the flyer your profile picture. Help us spread the word. Uh, share the flyer. Um, like the flyer. Help us get the word out about this Sunday in Jesus name. We love you. We'll see you tonight at 7 p.m. God bless you.